This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I am your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me as always, halfway across the world, Jared Morgan. Hello, everyone. How you going? Well, you know, we go, I guess. <laughs> we we are going. Yeah. So we've uh, we've uh, had a little time away, haven't we, Jared? Yeah, it's uh, we have had a extended uh, extended break, um, and it's not because stuff was really happening in life. It's just there was nothing to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I, I went through the effort of actually having something special planned for you guys last week. Um, and I, well, it was special for me. I don't know how special it had been for the rest of you. Uh, basically, I had lined up an interview with uh, a local sports radio uh, host uh, who is on the number one show in LA for sports radio. And we had a nice 20 minute long discussion and it wasn't about sports. It was about pop culture and what it is to be a broadcaster in this day of podcasting. Very informative. Really awesome. Loved it. Got done with it. Went and checked back the recording. And none of the audio recorded. <laughs> and to say the least, I was a, uh, a, a bit too embarrassed to email the guy back and be like, can we do that again? And no, I'm not going to do that to the guy. I mean... He's he's 20, 25 years professional in the uh, business. Yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> you know what though? It would have it would have happened to him at some point. And he probably would have gone, "You know what? That sucks." And I well, feel it, but no, I'm not recording again. <laughs> I wouldn't have been I might have actually thought about it if it hadn't been for the fact that it literally took us 15 minutes just to get interfaced in here because my audio was muted and I was trying to figure it out and mm -hmm. I couldn't and I finally did and it was one of those things where the computer's just making things happen for no apparent reason. And or not making things happen as the case may be. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you, this software drives me nuts because yep. you try and set it up where it clearly says my headphones are supposed to be for monitoring everything that is going to be broadcasting out to the show. But when I do that... You fine listeners, all you get is the double talk and echo. Uh, or, in this case, the fact that it didn't send any audio out. <laughs> so, I don't know. It was um, frustrating, to say the least. Mm, mm, I bet. Um, I, uh, I would imagine that, uh, yes, you would have been saying a few choice words after realizing the mistake. Yes. And then on top of that, there's, uh, let's see, California's on fire. Yeah, <laughs> uh, like majorly on fire. Uh, yeah. If you look up on YouTube, uh, basically look up California Blade Runner. People have put the it's music, basically that. Well, people have put the music to Blade Runner over the top of visuals. over the top. <laughs> yeah, because it really does look like the it, outer regions of. Blade it Runner. looks like, like the world's largest Instagram filter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's applied to literally everything. The Matrix has got a a, a bug in it, and it's like got a, a very brown tinge to it. Orange, I would say. Yeah, orange. You know. Oh look, it's Cheeto mode. <laughs> right, it's the only way that he'll get any foothold in California. <laughs> <laughs> it's Cheeto, Cheeto mode. That's right. Um, yep. So uh, in other news, uh, it turns out that uh, I should have checked the instructions on my face mask. Because I decided to finally wash it, and you're not supposed to put it in the dryer. Oh. Yeah, now it's a teeny tiny face mask. <laughs> <laughs> For little mouths. Yeah. So, it's been a week or two. <laughs> it's Yeah, it's been a year, mate. That's what it's been. Like, you know, this, this like, what I'm seeing over there in um, California is pretty much January for us this year. Because I've got a... I tweeted my stream going, oh, yeah, there was like two two kids, basically. There was a kid from California over the, the Blade Runner S background. And then there was the other, the Australian girl that was made famous for like literally the fires that got to the beachfront and she was out in the water. Oh, to escape right, them. right. And, and that was 20, that was January 2020. So it feels like it was a lot longer ago than that because 2020 has been such a nightmare of a year, but no, that we are experiencing the same thing in the same year. It's just different, different hemispheres. Of the You're Earth, in the future. Pretty <laughs> we, we are the, yes, we are the canary in the mine for what you guys are going to be experiencing. 
it seems lovely when it comes to environment yeah oh uh, well we're gonna try and make the uh, the the best of all of this though we're gonna talk somewhat pinball pinball adjacent if you will mm -hmm. of that nature because if you go through the forums, the various forums, and I do basically three different things. I do digital pinball fans, I do Discord, and I do Reddit. Mm. And across all three of them, there are some harebrained, just crazy rumor theories going on about Zen because you all aren't getting your pinball tables yet. Right, so therefore people think they're they're going down the path of far side, are they? I am pretty much. I literally uh, had uh, a friend of the show, but I don't need to mention who, uh, ask me, is Zen okay financially? And I went, where the hell is that coming from? What shred <laughs> of evidence do you have that that would lead you to ask that question? And the response was, well, there's a thread on Steam about it. <laughs> and I was like... Okay. okay well that's a chronicle source of information about business prosperity <laughs> <laughs> and it's like and, and I get that you know not everybody listens to our show in All fact right. not a lot of people listen to our show not nearly enough but if you're going to be putting out harebrained uh, guesses and rumors maybe you should listen to a few places that actually have you know Mel on twice in the past year, guys from one up on, you know. Um, mm. It might be helpful to know that things are just fine for the most just part. Just trucking along? Trucking yeah. along. Yeah, you know. Um, but I thought. Just because you don't see tables doesn't mean the place is dying. I mean, in the case of Farsight, you could probably assume that. <laughs> but they have other interests, and I think they're, you know, they're doing other things with their well, time and, at the and, moment. Let's yeah, so, so this is what I wanted to kind of bring up. Let's think yeah. about the things that we know that is out in public mm -hmm. of what Zen is currently doing. Yeah. Number one, Zen is updating the physics for all of the Zen original tables. Yes. No small task. Oh, that was the other thing. The other question was uh, questioning the, uh, the reality of if Zen's pinball division is actually as large as they say it is, and are people being siphoned from that division into the games division, uh, and vice versa. Like Castle Storm, essentially. Right. When we've had Mel on multiple times telling us that's not the case, while there is a little cross-pollination in the terms of like, yeah, if, if a Zen table needs character animation, sure, go to the other department who deals with mocap and character animation all the time and have them do it. And then yeah, send totally. it back over, you know. But it's not a question of, hey, the guy that's working on, you know, the pop bumpers uh, is needed over on Castle Storm and has to go do that now. <laughs> no. No, there's a set team. They, you know, <sighs> look, I'm sure we'll circle around to this, but, you know, just think, 10-year plan. Right. So yeah. quit looking at the one tree and look at the forest. Normally it's that's right. You know, <laughs> um, so we've got that with the with the physics. We've also got the idea that they're trying to figure out what they need to do to break or expand into the Asian market. Mm. Now, when you think about that, pinball machines haven't been readily available in China, Korea, Japan at all. I mean, no. in Japan, it's the case of space. In China, I'm sure it's the case of we don't want your Western whatever. And I don't know what the deal Pretty would much. be. You know, and Korea just kind of follows suits with both of those. Yeah. So uh, introducing... Funny thing is, though, what's that? Well, the funny thing is, though, like once once the, the Chinese and Korean folks have actually seen pinball... They love it. Well, and that's what I was remember. just going to say. There's that video from hmm. Homepin. Yeah. And they, they like, they go, well, this is awesome. We we want this lots, but we, none of the themes really resonate with us. Like, well, we, and we don't get these Western themes. Right, because that's yeah. what I was thinking. Uh, the humor that is on a Williams table oh, is not completely going lost. To, completely lost. And yeah. do you really think that someone in China cares one lick about medieval madness? No. No. 
No. So, yeah, it's a matter of you got to find some themes that resonate with them. Yeah. So mainly you're talking about uh, whether it be historical events or famous historical events or uh, legends, uh, folklore, that sort of thing. Yeah. Of which, what is it? Uh, there's, there's one particular guy in uh, Chinese folklore, or he was actually a real guy, but there has been hundreds of... Of movies about him, Jackie Chan has like three. Uh, the Legend of Drunken oh. Master is a one of them, I think. Uh, the, that movie with Jet Li Hero is based on one of them. I mean, there's tons of those. And then there's the what is it, the Monkey God or the Monkey King? Oh yeah, Monkey Magic. The, the, the all the legends of that. Yeah. All you have to do is tap into one of those two, and you're gonna have that market. And I think the Western market, we I'd already, that. yeah, we're already sold on pinball as it is. So we'd just kind of be like, oh, what's this? This will be, this should be interesting, you know. Um, yeah, it would be something fresh as well, like not just Western Western culture in pins. It would be something new and interesting, and you know, we might even learn some things about a different culture. You know, and Who then if you, thought? yeah, and then if you want to go the licensed route, well, that's where you start going into your anime and uh, video games uh, themes mm -hmm. that resonate more. It's not that they don't resonate with Western audiences, but it's that those are what resonate really strongly with the Asian market. That's right. Um, so these are things that obviously Zen has got to be exploring. I'm sure they're already knee deep in trying to license, um, get things like that hammered out. So there's mm -hmm. that aspect. And if, if indeed that's what they're doing, those are original tables, which means they're going to have to be creating those. Uh, <laughs> I still contend that we're going to get an Operencia and a Castle Storm 2 uh, original table. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, I'm surprised we haven't actually seen a, a disco dodgeball table yet either. Well, I was thinking, I think that we should get uh, Infinite Mini Golf and then uh -huh. introduce a new mode to Pinball FX3, Pin Golf. Y yes, absolutely. Like, it, it's obvious. Pin Golf is fun yeah. if you've ever played the format. So um, it would be awesome. Yes, Godzilla would be a natural uh, fit there, Selector. <laughs> oh, it's such a huge library of material that you could get Godzilla for. But I think uh, you deal with Toho. Stern has the rights for Godzilla at the moment because they snatched them from Spooky. Oh, um, they were planning on making a new Godzilla then, huh? They were actually going down the path of... Well, I've heard it ages ago now that they were actually going to make a, a Godzilla pin. But yes, yeah, Stern yoinked the license off them. Would um, make sense from the aspect that there's the uh, Godzilla versus King of King Kong going to be coming out. Well, who knows when it's going to be coming out now? It's already been made. Um, right. So that would make sense then. Okay. Yeah. So good luck with yanking that away. Mm. But still, that, you're on the right track. That is definitely what you got to be thinking about is things that resonate more with them and us Western audiences happen to have glommed onto them too. Yeah. Uh, what else is... Power Rangers, man. Let's, Power let's, Rangers. let's get that. <laughs> no, yeah. no. Voltron over Power Rangers any day. Voltron for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like based on the new anime series or animated series, that Voltron looks yeah. pretty good. And I've always... I keep on saying Cowboy Bebop, uh, especially mm. with the Netflix show getting ready to come out uh, it's prime for what you could do, uh, capitalizing on an audience that would be there. But so those mm. are some things. You've also got to figure out that Zen is working on uh, porting over to uh, PlayStation Five and Xbox, whatever it's called. <laughs> I'm, 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 I've got such a mental block on whatever the hell the next Xbox is going to be called. Xbox, the latest one. <laughs> yeah, <'cause... laughs> That's what I call it. The, the picture that they just released of it, it looks like a speaker. Like, it's Alexa. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, you know, they're obviously working on that. And then there is working with emulating alphanumerics, which, when we start thinking about why there would be possibly a delay regarding that, and Jared, you had mentioned this to me a little bit earlier too, Farsight had very similar problems with emulating uh, pre-DMD ROMs because of clock speeds, correct? 
Yeah, they did. It was like the super low clock speeds um, of these older System 11, System 9 games. It was really hard for them to get the timing right without speeding up all the like all the animations and everything. If they don't get the clock speed right and running right, all the animations and like uh, DMD gets out of sync. Not DMD, the alphanumeric displays yeah. and everything get out of sync with all the action on the play field. And it even affects some rules because the clock's not running at the right speed. So they have to put serious, what, what essentially is, you know, in engines, you have a thing called a governor that controls the speed of the engine so it can't go over speed. Well, they have to do that with emulation um, and put in like governors or restrictions in the pipelines to make sure that like it doesn't go fast. And that's really hard. The other thing too is that remember when Farsight was first implementing um, alphanumeric displays and they had all the problems with animating each segment of the display because a dot matrix display is a bit different. You just turn pixels on and off. But the way that Farsight did it, I'm not suggesting that Zen's doing it the same way, but their alphanumeric displays, each segment was a separate animated thing. So they had to address each segment as an animated item, and that really hit performance badly um, for them. And for, for ages, and still now you see, if you play any of the alphanumeric games um, in Pinball Arcade, you see that there are some frames in the um, the alphanumeric where instead of like going black, they just lock on and they stay the same until a new frame refreshes over the top. So it's it, like, it's, yeah, very hard seemingly to do, which is really weird, isn't it? Because it's old technology. You, think the, it would be you would think it would be easier. Do. Yeah, but then you yeah. start thinking about it. It's like if you've ever tried running you know, a DOS game that you bought off of Steam on your computer now, you have to go through 5 billion steps in order to make it run even remotely yeah. properly. <laughs> That's right. You do. Um, the other thing that I remember with, with Farsight, and that was with Norman, specifically on Centaur, the audio was driving him bonkers because oh, it because kept on the... going out of sync when it would loop. Every single time it did a, a complete cycle, it would be ever so slightly off of the previous cycle. And if you played the game for any period of time, things would get really, really off off target. The other really challenging thing with Centaur as well, because it all of the sounds were were essentially automatically, not automatically generated, but they were derived from a chip and generated from a chip. And that chip could do interesting things with it, like, you know, um, with uh, sounds speeding up and slowing down, and they were designed to do that. And so to capture all those those audio states, he had to actually record about 13 minutes of music at one point. I think it was for the Phantom of the Opera, where when you're sitting in the shooter lane in multi-ball and it has a, a slightly sort of ascending mm -hmm. tone that just keeps cycling and cycling, it turned out he had to record something like 13 or so minutes of audio to make sure that he had enough buffer <laughs> to cater for that if people just left it sitting there without looping. So... These older machines, because of the way that the audio was streamed essentially directly from these chips, a little bit different to DCS, which was essentially a digitally compressed audio that was produced on a like a, a workstation, and they just recorded the tracks. So that was a little bit different um, when they weren't like generating the music on the fly. Essentially, they were just like you know streaming what is essentially a very low bit rate MP3, for want of a better word. So yeah, these older machines have very interesting emulation requirements. The uh, it, it just kind of thinks makes me think also that this was a problem that so far like for those of you that don't know, Farsight's emulation was virtually the same as what uh, at the time it would have been a VP nine uh, was using. They the hired Steve Elenoff, who I believe was the partly responsible for pin mame emulation. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So they had hired him to kind of help crack that emulation nut, and that's why uh, Farsight's emulation kind of mimicked a lot of what was in there. To the best of my knowledge, Zen has completely created their own emulation. Uh, so this particular task would have been something that they would have had to have tackled blind as opposed to just using something that previously other people had done. With Farsight, every single time, though, they did a new alphanumeric, they had to solve the problem 
all over again. And again, going back to Norman, when he was doing uh, Firepower 2, the bonus count, if he didn't do anything to it and use just what the emulation did, it was a single tone bonus count. He wanted that ascending tone, and so he had to record all 400 and whatever possible tonal yeah, variations that there were. He literally sat at the machine and did something until did a bonus, drain the ball, burn, get the bonus count, do it again. Next month, burn, do it. I mean, it, it, I think it took him like five days. I know that he was he called me and was just like, I'm going mental right now dealing with this. Yep, um, I remember that. But that was, was every single machine, they had to solve that problem over again. Knowing Zen... I'm betting that they're trying to figure out a way of emulating this that solve it now, never have to worry about it again. Mm. I mean... They, they're doing the engineering. I'm, I think you're right. I think they're actually taking the time to make sure that if they release this thing and they release it on all the consoles and all the platforms, that it just works. Yeah. Because as, again, anybody that's dealt with Pinball Arcade versus Young this zen there hasn't been a lot of glaring bugs in zen um there's no. been a f here or there there's been a minor one i know that apparently there's mm. a, a really massive one in black rose where you can if the ball isn't locked and then you nudge it you can like rack up some huge points and it's oh, not okay. a rom state it's a zen state <laughs> that's causing right. it um it's the base the way that tilt interacts with the switches on the play field yeah, essentially yeah yeah um but by and large, there hasn't been anything that, as soon as it comes out, you just kind of go, oh, guys, hey. Um, whereas Farsight, my God, there's, to this day, there was huge glaring bugs that never got fixed. Um, they just you know, mm. sit there. So Ter Terrible, yeah. That's what I'm kind of uh, assuming. Uh, what else is Zen up to? Well, we know that they're up to Arcade 1-Up. Uh, I don't know how much responsibility they have with that other than making sure the software functions but i do know they're going to be involved in marketing for it mm. um so that's something that's on the plate this is all stuff that's currently going on and as mel had told us they've got a 10-year plan going forward so this to me would be the opening salvo who knows what's going on and more to the point as consumers why should we be privy to it mm. this is just internal business stuff it is you know, if, if, think of it like this. Think of 2020 as like a gap year. If you think of it like that, a gap in strategic planning year. And if they mentioned that at the beginning and said, hey, look, we're taking a year off production of pinball stuff to get our ducks in a row so that we can make the next 10 years amazing for for everyone. If they framed it like that, people would have gone, oh, yeah, cool. All right, fair enough. We get it. But I think it's because... It's internal business stuff and, and you know, there's no visibility and all the consumers can see is, well, there's no nothing being released. So, therefore, what's going on? That's the problem. Well, I keep on going know. back to just thinking about it. You know, does Blizzard really give all sorts of internal updates about the goings-on of whatever their games are? You know, no. pretty much you stay quiet about everything you put out the game hopefully the game speaks for itself and then you hear the horror stories after the fact um, yeah but if you start telling all the problems that are going into the game previously then people start getting a bad taste in their mouth about what that product is and they're gonna be looking for faults yeah that's right it's, it's people that need to know like it's just internal business stuff and uh, <laughs> all this to say i we honestly don't know what I mean we've been told that there's been delays because of alphanumeric and that's about the extent of it um, who knows mm. what is going on whether it's you know are they really having dealing with licensing stuff and all this other stuff is there something you know think about when they put out the when they were going to put out the Star Wars table for uh, Switch who knows what the fine print was whether there was hey you can't release a table X amount of time before or X amount of time after the release of this and it's up to nintendo to decide what the release date is and you know but what would would you really expect zen to come out and be like well nintendo's delaying us oh great so you're gonna throw your partner under the bus which makes yeah. your partner never want to partner up again with you 
yeah that that's not a, that's not a play in the zen playbook i don't think yeah <laughs> so i just kind of want again it's inside baseball yeah no one needs to know it's a duck on the water there's the surface of the water and then the legs going like this you know it's just stuff you don't need to know so just let me be as clear as i can possibly be about certain things folks zen is okay zen will be here in 2021 the mm-hmm. Williams license is not going anywhere. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. uh, so you can tuck away those little hopes that, oh, maybe Farsight will get it back. Why you would want them to get it back, I, it's beyond me. But no, yeah. the license is there for them to play with. They're still going forward with it. Uh, so let's just squash those rumor mill fires. Um, I'm saying that with 100% certainty. <laughs> yeah. There's, there is no way Farsight is going to have a seat at any table again based on what they did with the Williams and Belly license. It is just not possible. Um, it, what could eventually happen years into the future is that Zen, for whatever reason, doesn't keep the license. But that's not a next year problem. No. That's definitely not a next year problem. Uh, and really you don't need to worry about it yeah it is interesting thinking about how long you think that they might though play with the williams license before it becomes time for them to delve into other licensing um well you know i think we've already said for a while that it makes sense for them the next logical step after they've exhausted the Belly Williams license is to then start partnering with Zen, oh, not Zen, Stern, yeah, and go down that route. Um, and you know, we've seen some some tweets in the past where you know Mel and uh, Gary are pretty good mates, um, openly good mates on the Twitter stream. So you know, there there's certainly that credence to to that idea. But I think you know, as licenses go, and again we don't know the terms nor conditions of the license deal with um, scientific games and Zen, but you can assume that it's something like three years to five years, um, depending on what they decide to license. Um, So, you know, looking forward with this has been like essentially year two. Yes. um, And this is a year with largely not really a lot of output. Um, Which of course was not by design. (laughs) <laughs> no, this was like, hey, you know, we need to stop, take stock and actually plan so that we can actually do what we need to do for the next 10 years. So you can pretty much imagine that, you know, if there was any concern about the license running out anytime soon uh, for Zen, then that would have been addressed as part of this planning work. They would have gone back to Scientific Games saying, hey, here is our 10-year plan for the platform. This is where you fit into that 10-year plan. Can we make our contracts reflect that? Because that's why you do 10-year planning. Yeah. So you can go, hey, all the people we're engaged with, this is this is our roadmap. Do you agree with this roadmap as a partner? Um, can we lock that in, please, Eddie? Um, and uh, that's why they do it. Like, you don't plan two years in advance like Farsight did. You plan 10 years in advance and make your partners confident that you can execute. Now, interestingly enough... Zen hasn't been the only one, though, that's been a little bit cagey with releases <laughs> during this whole thing. Literally every single <laughs> physical pinball table manufacturer in the market has been keeping their cards pretty close to their chest, haven't they, Chris? There is this horse race that's like, uh, it's not much of a race yet because nobody's come out of the gates with regards to the cabinets. You've yeah. got uh, Toy Shock. They did their whole big reveal of what you know uh, about their cabinets, but have they dropped them yet? Mm, nope. Uh, obviously, Arcade One Up. They did their whole big reveal. Did we have a release date yet? Mm, nope. Uh, and then there's At Games. They've released their lap uh, or, or portable deck um, that can play a, a myriad of games. Among them, pinball. Yeah. Um, but they have not released their. They haven't even released. Uh, pictures of it pictures uh, of it yeah of their of their pinball cabinet so it's like all three of them are kind of like who's going to talk first 
Then we get a tweet from Arcuda out saying they're going to have some news coming. It's like, hooray, Arcuda's back, but <laughs> what are you guys what? waiting for? <laughs> everyone, everyone is just sitting on the information at the moment. And I, I've got a feeling that between October to December, it is just going to be a floodgate of information happening. That's my gut feel. I, I think everyone is going to hard announce everything between October and December, and they'll just they'll just be available. Like they'll go, here's a product, place your orders now, and that's it. Oh right, so um, no, no, it's coming, you know, two months down the line, kind of thing. It's just going to be. No, it's like, this is it. Place you your orders go buy now. It now. Yeah, pretty much. I reckon that's what they're doing because they need that. Like they need that Christmas market. That's what they need. If they don't hit that, we know that that is going to be a problem for anyone trying to shift product this year because that's when you buy. You buy for Christmas. So here's so, a, what I'm also wondering is, are they all being hesitant because they don't know when Sony and Microsoft are releasing their consoles? Like, you don't want to necessarily go head-to-head -head with those either. No, because they're a significant purchase for households. So, you know, they're about, you know, half a grand each, essentially. Yeah. Um, well, certainly with the Australia tax, they're a half a grand each, um, but maybe a quarter of a grand each in, in the US. But, you know, still not trivial, particularly no. in the times we're in at the moment where, you know, people have been laid off and they don't really have a lot of disposable income to throw around. So, you know, it's, you, you don't want to be noise or considered noise in this market do you so so this comes back again with uh, everybody being all butt spinkered tight about what's going on with zen look around the games market it's they're not the only ones um and you're not no. uh, fretting about them all those other companies are you you're just no. being fanboys and i got in a little trouble on a reddit thread accusing Basically saying how, you know, it's fandom can turn toxic. Mm -hmm. um, that's what you got to be careful of, though. You know, it's great to be excited about a product. It's great to be a fan of the product. But instead you of... you got to have your reality hat put on, though, right? Like, yeah. it's just... you got to, like, approach it with a bit of logic and a bit of grounding. Well, quit focusing on the end result and realize that there is 100,000 steps prior to make that end result even happen. And, mm. you know, just have a little consideration for all of those things and you'll start to, to appreciate what it is. But, you know, everybody wants to be the, uh, well, the Monday morning quarterback or the, uh, you know, the, the exec that doesn't have an exec uh, stress. <laughs> yeah, that's to right. figure it out, but. Yeah, lounge room executives are the best sort, right? There you go, lounge room executives. All right, yeah. we're going uh, to switch up gears here, Jared. We're going to play mm. a, a, well, you're going to play a game <laughs> that I played, that I was playing with my guest. My guest, by the way, his name is Steve Mason. Uh, he's on 710 ESPN here in Los Angeles. And he's also got a podcast by the name of uh, Culture Pop that is all about uh, pop culture. Uh, his latest episode, he just has Brian Cranston on, who basically said that if Better Call Saul... Uh, says, hey, would you come back and do a bit about Walter White that he wouldn't hesitate and he would do it. So, right. Um, yeah, Steve gets a lot of uh, really good people. So make sure you check out his his podcast, uh, Culture Pop. But uh, he on... So the show that he's on, on the radio, is called uh, The Mason Ireland Show. And in a lot of respects, it's what this very show is kind of modeled on in terms of... We talk pinball, but then we have no problem going off on a tangent that is completely unrelated to pinball. They do the same thing where they're, they're it's a sports show, but they'll all of a sudden have these games and little quizzes that have nothing to do with sports. Just break it up a little bit, you know? exactly. Yeah. Keep things yeah. keep things interesting, and it's one of those things that uh, we discovered the uh, other pinball podcasts were jealous of us being able to do that. <laughs> No, we've got a good flow. We've been doing these for way too long. I mean, we love we love doing these shows all the time. <laughs> so, Jared, here's what the here's what the uh, the game is called. It's called sport or skill. Sport or skill. Okay. I am going to read off an event that has been featured on a sports network at one time or another. I want you to tell me: is it actually a sport or is it eh, just a skill? 
Oh, okay. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Here we go. Your first one. Archery. Sport or skill? Archery. I think it is a skill. I tend to agree with you. Mm. Uh, like, there is some, there's not, a, I wouldn't say there's a lot of athleticism to it. And mainly I go back to, would you call darts a sport? No. That was, ex that was exactly <laughs> my next thought. You know, dart, dart, darts and archery, um, and to an extent, um, unless I'm going to steal your thunder here, like billiards and pool is essentially skill. Uh, and practice, of course, which is, you know, uh, to be expected with sport as well. But I think it's more skill-based than athletic fitness-based. Well, yes, indeed, billiards was on the list. So we'll just cross that one out now, too. <laughs> um, I figured it probably would be. It's, yeah, it's you a good know. One. Uh, let's move on to the next one, which is bowling. Mm. Bowling. Let's let's just let's just unpack bowling for a minute. So you grab your ball, you've got it in your arm, you need a certain amount of strength in your arm to do it. Right. Then you've got to like do a little run. <laughs> and then you gotta let it go. So I'd say, you know, the 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 kinetic motion stuff in that is more just motor skills rather than like fitness skills. So I'm gonna I'm gonna lean on the side of skill for that as well. Very good. All right. I'm not going to dispute that either. Okay. Mm. Esports. Oh. <laughs> Esports. That's definitely a skill. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's little to no exercise or physical exertion required for that. Unless you're playing um, uh, virtual reality esports and you're on one of those like elliptical treadmills that you have to run around uh, an arena in, which I don't really see very much of with eSports. No, so let's, you're, you're let's pretty much seeing that. League of Legends and things like that, yeah. I'm yeah. I, I'll tell you right now, I pretty much assume if you can be drinking and doing the thing, the, the activity at the same time, it's just a skill. <laughs> it's a skill, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, next one. Uh, well, it doesn't make much sense to you guys because I don't think you have it there in Australia. But uh, let's give it a go. Let's give, give it a go. NASCAR. Oh, NASCAR. Hmm. So NASCAR, a lot of like... left-hand turns for four or five hundred miles. <laughs> yes, that's true. Well, you know, is driving a skill or a sport? That's. <laughs> You need to ask yourself, isn't it? That is that so is I, the thing. So that's why, you know, this one is a little bit more difficult. It is because and we know this. So you have NASCAR over there in America. We have V8 supercars over here okay. in Australia. Similar thing, except V8 supercars, you, you turn them all to run them one direction. And they're usually street courses um, or racetracks with more than just left-hand turns. So... Um, both sports are demanding on the body. Correct. So um, they they require a certain degree of physical fitness to withstand the rigors of driving at that level. Um, so I'd almost, even though you're not running around, like these guys just get out of their cars and they're just a ball of sweat. And like they have to go to the gym and stuff to actually get essentially race fit to be able to do this. They can't just sit there slamming beers back and, you know, that's their fitness regime. So I'd almost suggest this one could be a sport. I concur. And part of mm. that is, by and large, we consider, you know, if you were doing a foot race, that that is sport. Uh, yeah. There is a certain amount of psychology that goes into racing. Oh, a huge amount, um, yeah. And strategy and planning and uh, dealing with adverse uh, weather conditions, et weather conditions, stuff like that. Yeah, all of that. Um, and on top of that, there is the physical uh, toll that it takes on you. So, yeah, I, I would call it a sport. 
I purposely yeah. picked NASCAR just because it is the most simplistic, you know, as opposed to if I said, you know, F1, uh, mm. <laughs> you know, which I think would be much easier to categorize as sport. Um, but yeah. The other thing that's interesting about NASCAR and, and V8 supercar as well is that it's not just one dude in a car driving around the course. It's a whole team of people. Yeah. Behind the scenes that make that person driving around the race course possible. So I think that's another big, big indicator that it's a sport versus a skill. Okay. okay. Next one. Yeah. Curling. Oh, curling. Yeah, look, you, you need you need more than one person to do that. So that's sort of like, you know, rules out the solo versus uh team aspect. So um you you have to run after the thing. So you, that does involve some, exa- it's certainly not like uh, aerobic or anaerobic, but you know, those, the, the people like grooming the field in front of the, um, the curling, uh, I forget the the term for it, but the, 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 the curling puck, let's call it. That's wrong. I know, but, uh, uh, you know, they're scrubbing furiously away. So that'd be a cardio workout for sure. <laughs> so we're like, grooming it down the ice the ice field so i'd say i'd say um um that is a that's a sport and that's in the olympics as a sport so uh, you know i guess archery is too so that sort of debunks that theory as well doesn't it yeah I, i'm sorry you're wrong it's glorified shuffleboard if it's, you can it's if, you can, if you can play it on a cruise ship it's not a sport um, right that's fair enough i guess yes uh Speaking of another Olympic sport, synchronized swimming. So, well, that's not something you can play with a beer in your hand. No, it's so, not. That is. But is it sport or is it a skill? That's the question. Oh. There's no doubt that skill is involved. There's definitely a team involved because you can't do synchronized swimming by yourself because then it's not synchronized. <laughs> <laughs> so solitary e- swimming so, so, sing, so individual swimming <laughs> individual synchronized swimming or well, asynchronous swimming as it would be known <laughs> uh oh this is a tricky one too it's sort of a fine line you're making these later ones really hard chris i'd <laughs> say it is a skill Ding, ding, ding. That's what I'm going to go with that on, too. To me, it's a lot like uh, dancing. Dancing yeah, is, dancing, dancing yeah. is a skill. It's not considered sport. It's very athletic, yeah. but it's not a yes. sport. Yeah. Um, and part of that might be because, you know, their heads are underwater the entire time, so they'd never be able to hear the cheer, you know, the crowd cheering anyway. <laughs> hmm. Except muffled. Muffled. Yeah. Muffled. 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 Okay. Yeah. Your next one. Sport or skill? Golf. Oh. <laughs> Golf. Yeah, right. Um, it is... Uh, it, you don't do a lot of physical exertion, particularly if you're rolling a cart around the track. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a drinks cart following you around the track as well. Um, so, you know, this is this is one of my favorite... Um, sport skills <laughs> because you go there and really it's not about the golf it's just about catching up with your mates really so it's a skill totally you know i agree it's just a skill yeah. you can be yeah, really you, really good at it but yeah. memory, it comes down to knowing how to how to hit that little white ball and you know get the gophers so you know next it's up a, oh skill. what yeah skill yeah next up rock climbing rock climbing i know a rock climber and and he has to spend a fair bit of time on rock walls learning how to do it right but he learns how to rock climb he couples that with physical fitness as well Uh, i'd say that because of the demands of physical fitness it requires I think that's definitely a sport. And I would agree because it's not just a matter of being really good at climbing a rock. You still have to do your homework. You still have to strategize. You still have yeah. to plan how to your your competitor is the rock face itself. 
Um, That's right. So you are going up against the team of a mountain. Yes. And that is your competitor. So yeah, I, I think it's definitely a sport. Yeah. Skateboarding. Hmm. Skateboarding. Uh, again, skateboarding, solo activity. Um, you aren't really going up against something like uh, like a competitor except for the other competitors in the field, which all run separately. Is it a bit like surfing? Well, it sort of is. I mean, it was dry from surfing, wasn't it? Correct. You know, so they could do it in the summer or the winter when it was cold. So I think that's probably more of a skill. I'm leaning more towards a sport. And Why you say that? I say that because uh, it's judged with multiple heats. Okay. Yeah. And right. uh, there, there is an actual format. Uh, there are specific rules to how to to score like that. It, it's in some respects like gymnastics. I guess is what I would you know what goes on with gym with gymnastics where you're solo, but you're still competing against plenty of other people. You're being judged. Um, it takes athleticism. It takes learning the skill. Uh, and then applying all you know and putting it in motion um, yes. to combine it with a bunch of other skills that you've learned at the same time. So that's why I'd kind of tend towards uh, sport on that one. Yeah, that's that's fair enough analysis. I think I'd probably go with you on that in retrospect. Okay, I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna make it a little easier on you for this one. Okay, poker. I like it. Poker. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. That's one you can play with a drink in your hand. So, yeah, that's definitely a skill. That's one that there's something wrong if you don't have a drink in your hand while playing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, Ninja Warrior. Okay, that's... I uh, I would say that is definitely a sport um, because I see how much effort the Warriors put into training um, and... Like they build their own courses so they can practice the moves. Like there's a strategy involved to how to actually get through those courses effectively. So again, your competitor is the course uh, that you're going up against as an individual. So I think it's it's a sport that one. Well, and also because we've already declared that um, rock climbing is a sport, it's a sport. and it there's a lot of rock climbers in there. Um, you also well, there get, are, yeah yeah you also get a lot of gymnasts in there. Um, so it's it's not just one particular skill that you learn. It's a it's kind of like mixed martial arts where you got to have a mirror. Yeah, or CrossFit. it's I, CrossFit for um um <laughs> for competitive um obstacle scaling. Yeah, <laughs> really, it's what it is. I think the only reason why people don't view it so much as a sport is because it's never aired live. Uh yeah, that's true. It's always pre-recorded. It's, it's pre essentially another reality TV format. Exactly, it's presented as a show. Mm. you know even though and there is editing involved in terms of how they place the order of people so you know the show itself is crafting a story but if you attended live you don't get any of that so it'd be no. then it would be more sport but, all right um fishing fishing is a skill <laughs> we don't need yeah. to debate that one okay fishing is a skill next last one last one for you okay competitive eating uh, that's disgusting, and it's a skill. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent disgusting. Yeah, <laughs> and hundred percent a skill. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. no doubt about that. that um, absolutely disgusting. The things that people do to put too much food into their body is just repulsive, and they shouldn't. <laughs> It's amazing too, because like one of the top competitive eaters is this teeny tiny gal, and you're mm. just like, how <laughs> does the, how does that even function and work? I don't understand. Um, but then you start hearing about what they, what their preparation is beforehand. And what, what do they do? How do they do it? Because I've like I I know it grosses me out, but I don't know what's involved in getting to the point where it grosses me out. <laughs> They were saying that there are certain foods that help keep the stomach elastic uh, that they'll eat prior, uh, you know, like for the week prior. 
um, you don't want your stomach feeling rigid and hard. You want it uh, elast- feeling elastic. You want it to be something that will uh, have gotten the stomach acids working. Um, right. And and then I think because it's not about you being hungry, you know. So f- they do tend to fast the day before, mm-hmm. but it's they said you can't be fasting a lot because then that'll shrink the stomach back down. It'll shrink the stomach. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, I just, I just can't imagine that feeling afterwards. <laughs> just, oh, I would, oh, I, I don't know how they managed to keep it down. I, I don't. You know, when you, when you just, you've busted out into the cold sweats, because every pore of your body is like, reject this, reject this. Do do not do not put any other thing in your mouth now, otherwise you're going to see it all again. I was going to say it's it's literally uh, Mr. Creosote Man from Meaning of Life. Oh, I couldn't have another bite. Oh, do so. Yeah, it's, it's it's wafer thin. <laughs> wafer thin bites, sir. Please have another bite. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> Well, that was a uh, that was a pleasantly disgusting way to end the show, huh? It was a pleasantly disgusting <laughs> way to end the show. I approve. Yes. So here's the deal, folks. We are going to wait now for our podcast for any actual news to drop, um, because we think that it's got to be imminent. We've literally. We've sent out messages to the, our various contacts, going, "Can we do a podcast soon? You know about something?" And uh, they've mm. been just kind of like, "Be patient, be patient." Um, so, yeah, we're going to delay. So, if there's another three week delay, you'll know why. Um, hopefully, it's not yeah. going to be that long. But that's, I'm just going to put that out there that uh, we're not going to, we're, we're not going to fill it. No, it's, it, like this. I think we did pretty well today, filling it. But like, you don't need to listen to that. You come here for pinball stuff, and you know you want to learn things and maybe have a laugh with us. And if we're just trying to force out sausages from the big sausage machine that is Black Eight Pinball Podcast, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be enjoyable to listen to. So we prefer to you know give you time to do other things. Uh, and not have to listen to us do. Right, because this isn't competitive listening. No, it's not competitive <laughs> listening. No, definitely not. Where we're like, you, you must <laughs> listen to us at two times speed. And uh, Although yeah. when you do listen to us at two times speed, Jared's laugh is quite hilarious. Yeah, I, 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 yes. In fact, listening to any Australian at two times speed is, yeah, it's, it's an interesting experience. Um, so, yeah. Oh, hold on. We've got a question here in the uh, the pinball tournament, sport or skill? Oh, I, I definitely think that a pinball tournament is... Uh, it's, it's unfortunately, as much as I'd like to say it is a sport, because I can like buy equipment and write it off as tax, <laughs> uh, it's definitely a skill. It's definitely a skill. Yeah. I, I 100% agree it's definitely a skill, because I've seen very very good players just walk up to a table that they have not even practiced on one iota and completely destroy it mm. um with zero training so yeah that's right <laughs> well zero zero training on that game and that time with that configuration setup they just don't need to worry about it they know how to they know how to work a machine you know? yeah 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 all right well uh that's going to wrap it up for us, folks. Uh, we do appreciate you. All of you that have uh, joined us for our live Twitch and have been uh, jumping in here on the comments, we definitely like that. Um, things you can do. You can certainly go look us up on Twitter. Give us a follow. Uh, that way you'll be up to date. The minute we know any information, we pass it forward. Usually it's a forwarded tweet from... You know, lately it's been Arcuda. We forwarded theirs. We are forwarded Zen's uh, latest tweets. Um, so that's what we do on that one. It's good to follow us. Uh, if you really feel like being bold, you can follow individually myself or Jared. Yes. Your results went very. Yes. <laughs> and and it's really easy to figure. See, right now in the corner of the screen there, it says at Jared Morris. And if you look at mine, it says at Show Your Traps. But if you look over this one, the main show, at Blockade. Um 
So please do that. Also, uh, why don't you go head over to YouTube. Subscribe to our channel. It's it goes up on YouTube faster than I can get it out. So you'll yeah. you'll be able to like suck it up there and watch it again um, over there before I push it out to, um, to the audios. Yes. Matches. Yeah. Yes. So those are two things that you would uh, be wise to do because I guarantee news is coming and you're going to want to be on top of it when we go ahead and post. Mm. Beyond that, until next time, hopefully it's not just going to be Jared's favorite things. Stuff and things. We hope not. All right. Until then, folks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.